Hello, my dear, dear friends. Yes, it's finally time for some more Ask Uncle Ben. I'm so sorry I haven't been here for the last couple of days, but I needed a rather long and luxurious bath, soaking in the suds. But I'm back now. We've had a lot of questions, a lot of questions. I'm afraid I can't answer all of them now, because we've had 20 at least, so I'm going to do half of them now, and half of them in the next episode. So let's go straight down to it, shall we? Straight down to it, madam. Right, we've heard from Andy again. Hello again, Andy. Andy says, thank you. Those answers were surprisingly informative. However, question one, is this the way to Amarillo? <laughs> well, Andy, this is the way to Amarillo, but unfortunately this train only goes halfway, then there's a replacement bus service to take you the rest of the way, all right? And you thought it was a long way to Tipperary. Question two from Andy, a strong mixture of nitric and hydrochloric acid is just the thing for dissolving human remains. I'll take your word for that, Andy. But there's always an annoying residue left in the bottom of the bath. Any ideas on how to shift it? Hmm. Well, I suggest, Andy, that what you do is you feed your victim with white wine vinegar and baking soda about, about half an hour before you kill them. 20 minutes, half an hour. And then you'll find the bath will clean itself. Oh, yes, yes, Whis Whister's nodding furiously in the corner over there. At least I, th I think that's nodding. Uh, question three from Andy. Let's have a look. Uh, cream eggs have become a national disgrace since Charlie took over the chocolate factory. How do we get him fired? Uh, <laughs> an interesting question. Um, do you know, I, I, this is for the first time, Andy, this is something I don't really know about. Um, I'll tell you what, though. I think there might be some little friends here that could help me out. Guys, guys, come on over. Yes, yes, don't be shy. Come on. Come on over here. Here we go, Andy. I think these chaps might be able to answer your question. Oompa Loompa Doobity Doo will find the best solution for you. Oompa Loompa Doobity Dee How can we kill that tosser Charlie? Chop off his knees and push him down a mile. Yes. Fill him with cheese and then drown him in wine. Yes. Jump seven toasters into his bath. Stab him to death with a Wonka bar. He's got diabetes. He's, 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 he's got diabetes. <sighs> Oompa, loompa, doobity dip. Since he's taken over, this place has been shit. Yeah. Oompa, loompa, doobity dee. A child cannot run a large company. Let's rip off his arms and throw him in the lake. Yes, and they'll crush him to death and turn him into paste. Let's attach both his balls to a high-flying kind. Yeah. Skin him alive with a toffee knife. We are orange maniacs. We, 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 we are orange maniacs. Yes. Oompa, loompa, doopity dat. We will take care of that ignorant breast. Yes, we will. Oompa, loompa, doopity bye. We're the Oompa Loompas. Charlie must die. We're the Oompa Loompas. Charlie must die. Well, there we are, Andy. I hope that's answered your question all right there. Um, I'm slightly terrified of Oompa Loompas now. Yes, yes, bye-bye, chaps. Yes, back you go. Good grief. Right, moving on to the next question, I think. Best do that. Uh, Dear Uncle Ben, when you make contact with a friend from school days and he appears to be a huge pretentious dullard, what do you do? You're sincerely a sincere person of loveliness. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Um, well, I suppose I could get the Oompa Loompas to have a word, but then actually, no, I don't want to get them back out again. Um, no, I'm not calling you, stay there. Um, hmm, I don't know. I can't imagine any of your school friends being huge pretentious dullards, you know? Are you sure you don't mean Hugh, the pretentious bollard? He was great. Do you remember? He, he used to tell us all our futures. He wasn't always right, but sometimes he was. Sometimes he was. And he alerted cars to various obstacles. Oh, he's a great guy. Great guy. Here's a shout-out to Hugh, the pretentious bollard. Hi, Hugh. Hope you're doing well. Right, let's move on to the next question. This is from Alana Cobb. Oh, that's a good name, isn't it? Cobb. Cobb. It's rather fun to say. Cobb. Why don't you say it along with me at home there? Ready? One, two, three. Cobb. <laughs> Once more. Cobb. Right, sorry, Alana. Um, Alana says, why does nobody come on the rostrum in Act 2? <laughs> now, look, I've told you this. Nobody comes on the rostrum in Act 2! 
This is an extremely personal joke that no one else will know what we're talking about, but never mind, I'm sure it's just lovely. Also, Alana, you should be aware that all the furniture has been built for fucking hamsters. And bury me in the under theatres. Thank you very much, Alana. Sorry, everybody else who have no idea what we're saying. A question from Kingsley. Hello again, Kingsley. Why is Simon Morgan's nose so long? <laughs> well, that's because, Kingsley, it has to be able to fit in his nose hammock. Uh, Simon himself actually commented on this question, saying it's only half the size of his penis. <laughs> well, yes, that's, that's possibly true. Keeping his penis in his cock cradle, of course. Uh, also, though, you see, Kingsley Simon uses his nose to suck poetry out of the carpet. Hope that answers your question. Now we've got a question from Mummy Ram again. Hello again, Mummy Ram. Mummy Ram asks, do dragonflies mourn? Well, that's a good question, Mummy Dragon. Mummy Dragon? <laughs> Let me assure you, listeners, Mummy Ram is not a dragon in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Just a slip of the tongue there. It's like she's my mother-in-law. She isn't. Or well, she may as well be. Marvellous woman. Anyway, um, I don't know about this entirely, Mummy Ram, but I did read a poem somewhere, I think, that might help explain. So let me just read that to you. Hush now, little dragonfly. I know your mummy's gone. But there's nothing to be sad about, for dragonflies don't mourn. Don't cry now, little dragonfly. Look up, it's nearly dawn. It will soon be time for you to fly, for dragonflies don't mourn. So fly now, little dragonfly, the day is bright and warm. You can't just sit there in the dark, for dragonflies don't mourn. Come on now, little dragonfly, you'll miss the dew-filled morn. You look so sad and lonely, perhaps dragonflies do mourn. I'm sorry, little dragonfly. I know your mummy's gone. You take your time. You'll fly again. And until then, you will mourn. One day, little dragonfly, you'll fly right up to the clouds, soaring high in the big blue sky, and your mummy will be proud. So hush now, little dragonfly. There'll be another dawn. You wait till then, and I'll tell my friend. The dragonflies do mourn. There we are, Mummy Ram. I hope that's answered your question. It's made me feel rather sad now. I think we need something to cheer us up. Let's have a little bit of this news. And I expect you all to sing along and dance along at home. Now I suppose we better carry on. Uh, right, next question. Let's have a look here. Yo, uncool Benghazi. <laughs> More confusion there, I think. Why you got such a silly and still somehow offensive name, Essie? Yours sincerely, three quarters of the human race and a quarter of pear drops. Mmm, pear drops. I used to like pear drops. Well, they're not as much as cola cubes. Do you remember cola cubes? Oh, yes, aniseed balls. Aniseed balls, splendid. Anyway, sorry, I'm answering your question. Well, I don't think my name's offensive. How is it offensive? Should meet some of my friends like a uh, Uncle Minority Mocker and Auntie Holocaust Denier. Mm. See, I'm not offensive, so be quiet. Right, next question. Dear Uncle Ben, considering that traditional Chinese medicine has been around for so many centuries, how is it still so unbelievably useless? And bearing in mind it has been responsible for the near extinction of many species by promoting their horns, bones, or sexual organs as miracle cures, how is it still considered slightly racist to condemn it? Yours sincerely, the embodiment of frustrated fury. Ah, nice to hear from you, embodiment of frustrated fury. How have you been? Um, yes, I quite agree with you on this one. I think what we need to see is for, is for all those idiots that buy all this rubbish to start believing that powdered moronic elephant and rhino hunter's testicles are good for you, or a Japanese waders' kneecaps can cure cancer, or something like that. 
But I'm afraid, really, at the end of the day, a lot of people are stupid. It's as simple as that. I could set the Oompa Loompas on them, maybe, if you like. Let me know. Right, final question for now. From Alex. Hello again, Alex. Uh, with the referendum on leaving the EU coming up, I'm hearing an increasing amount of varying points of view from my various friends, colleagues and acquaintances. I find myself confused by many of their reasons for either staying or Brexiting, and would like to know what is the most convincing argument for anything that you've ever heard, and what was the most bewildering? Hmm, very good question, Alex. Well, I think the most convincing argument is probably with myself, where I say surely I should eat really healthily and do loads and loads of exercise every day and constantly try to better myself and always do more one day than I did the previous day and never give up and be everything that I could possibly be. But then the argument comes in which says, hmm, probably best not to bother really, let me just lie on your bed and eat an entire pack of biscuits in about ten minutes. I, yeah, it's always convinced me, bloody good argument in my opinion. Um, as for the most bewildering, well, I would say the most bewildering one is probably the answer to, well, you know, why do we continue with this peculiar existence every day, day after day, night after night, work after work, sleep after sleep, constantly struggling and doubting ourselves? I mean, what is the point? What is the point? Why do we adhere to all these, these rules? And why do we feel so guilty about everything and ashamed about everything? And why do we hate each other and fear each other and kill each other and encourage sadistic Oompa to do our bidding for us? And, and why do we always yearn for something we can't have yet, yet we seldom learn from the things we have had? And, and why? Just why? 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 And the answer that people give is, well, because the big beardy man in the sky says so. All right. I think that's probably the most bewildering argument, and indeed useless argument, I've ever heard. Well, that's it for today, everybody. I will get round to those remaining questions very soon, I promise you that. Until then, I want you all to take care. I want you all to snuggle up under a duvet, eating something nice, and just having a jolly lovely time, all right? And then I want you to get up and dance around and sing and clap. If you don't want to do any of that, please don't bother. Just watch Netflix or something. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.